Hello everyone and welcome back to Unforgotten Tech. My name is Gregory Krause and today we're going to be talking about rear shocks. Today we're going to be replacing the rear shocks on this 2016 Toyota Corolla and we're going to be talking about what a rear shock is, what happens if they fail or wear out, and finally we're going to be going over how to replace and reinstall a new one. Now before we get started, if you're new to the channel, please take a moment and subscribe to it. And also if you enjoy the content today, please hit that like button. In their simplest form, shock absorbers are hydraulic pump-like devices that help control the impact and rebound of movement of your vehicle's springs and suspension. Along with smoothing out bumps and vibrations, the key role of shock absorbers is to ensure the vehicle's tires remain in contact with the road surface at all times, which ensures the safest control and braking response for your car. Essentially, shock absorbers do two things. Apart from controlling the movement of springs and suspension, shock absorbers also keep the tires in contact with the road at all times. At rest or in motion, the bottom surface of your tires are the only parts of the vehicle in contact with the road. Anytime the tire's contact with the road is broken or reduced, your ability to drive, steer, and brake is severely compromised. Over time, shocks will wear out and need to be replaced. When shocks wear out, this can affect riding comfort, handling, as well as vehicle control, braking, steering, wheel alignment, and cause premature wear on tires and other suspension components. Bad shocks are generally diagnosed through a visual inspection, drive test, or a customer's concern of one of the following. Cupping on tires, especially if a rotation was performed on schedule but abnormal wear is still occurring, active leaking of oil on the dampening component, a rougher ride, bottoming out, your vehicle's body or suspension hitting the ground when going over a parked garage ramp or backing out of a driveway, longer stopping distances, swaying after a turn, a lane change, or in crosswinds, noticeable bounciness, more than one or two bounces after going over dips or bumps, or any visual damage to the components. All right, now that we know what a shock is, how they work, and why we need to replace them, let's go over how to remove and install a new set. For this job, the required PPE is going to be safety glasses, closed-toed shoes, and be free of loose or hanging jewelry, hair, or clothing. Tools and equipment for this job will include a socket set, impact and socket, torque wrench, pry bar, breaker bar, hammer, and a floor jack. And then of course we will need the new parts uh, which it is recommended to replace in pairs. First step we're going to have to do is to remove the tray out of the trunk. To do this we'll have to remove all of the little tabs from around the trunk panel. Next we're going to remove the rear wheels from the vehicle. With the vehicle on the lift, we're going to use the floor jack to support the bottom of the suspension. With the suspension supported, we will now remove the bolt at the bottom of the shock. In some cases, you may have to use a pry bar to remove the shock off of the bolt itself. Next, we're going to move into the trunk and remove the two nuts up on top. You may need a breaker bar to loosen them up. The third nut is welded in place, so we'll remove the bolt from underneath the wheel well. With the bolts removed, we can now lower out the shock and remove it from the vehicle. Now we'll be installing the new shock. Note that each shock is labeled on the particular side, this one being the right side of the vehicle. With the new shock put in place, we will now install the nuts and bolts back on it. We're going to start at the top of the strut and then we'll work our way to the bottom. We'll do it hand tight at first and then we're going to follow up by torquing all the bolts to the proper recommendations. Whenever you perform suspension work, you should complete a wheel alignment as well. If you'd like to learn how to perform a wheel alignment, please check out our video on how to perform a wheel alignment.
Now that we got everything torqued down to factory settings on this side of the vehicle, we can repeat the process on the opposite side of the vehicle and replace the other shock. After that, we'll be installing the tires back on the vehicle. The last step here is going to be taking the vehicle out for a road test and verifying the repair. All right, just to recap, today we learned what a shock is, how they work, how to inspect them, and what can happen if they wear out or fail. And last, we went over the steps on how to properly remove and replace a shock with a brand new one. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. My name is Gregory Krause with Unforgotten Tech, and we'll see you next time.